Struggling on offense in Madden 24? If you're having trouble passing... Nope. 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 Taking too many sacks... Help me! Help me! Or throwing too many interceptions... No! This is the video for you. So if you want to see the best tips, tricks, and cheats for a better offense... Break yourself, fool! Stick around after the intro. The for the fastest, cheapest, most reliable coins on the market, check out my coin sponsor, MMOXP.com, and use discount code MONEYSHOT to get 5% off your order. Link in the description below. My first tip is going to be some things you can do before the play even starts. And the first one is going to be one that you should do before you even select a play. And this can be found in your coaching adjustments. If you find yourself fumbling more than you think you should be, or you just want to reduce your chances of fumbling in a specific situation, try setting your ball carrier to conservative, and you will notice that it all but turns fumbling off for all the positions, including the ones that are designed to fumble the most in the game, like quarterbacks and receivers. I turn this setting off at the start of every game, and I rarely see anyone fumble on my team. Even if I forget to use the protect ball, Ball function by holding the RB or R1 button. Next up, I'm going to go over something that you should be doing in every game, and that is reading the defense before every single play, as this can make both running and passing easier if you know what defense your opponent is in and where to find the weakness of that defense. There is a lot to go over on this topic, so I actually made an entire video breaking this down in full detail called How to Read and Beat Every Defense in Madden 24. So if you want to know more, I will have a link in the description to that video as well as an on screen pop up at the end of this video, so stick around for that. But I will give you a quick overview on how to read a defense in this video video as well as all you really have to do is look at the cornerback's depth at the start of the play before your opponent makes any adjustments when you come out of the huddle. If the cornerback starts the play right in front of the receiver at the line of scrimmage in a press look like this, it is a cover two man, as this is the only defense that starts this way because cover two cornerbacks will press the receivers after the snap. If the cornerbacks are five yards off the line of scrimmage like this, it is a cover two zone, as the cornerbacks are responsible for the lower area of the field, so they will start to play closer to the area that they will cover. This is also also the only defense that starts this shallow, as cover 3, cover 4, cover 1, and cover 0 all start with their cornerbacks at an 8 yard depth. Making this a little more involved, you can tell the difference between man and zone by looking to see if the cornerbacks are man aligned in front of their receivers compared to if they are aligned to the areas they are responsible for in zone. When coming out of the huddle, it is best to hide what you are doing on offense as well, as it is always easier to win if you know what your opponent is going to do. It's hard to read an offense, but there are certain tells that experienced players can pick up on, based on your quarterback's pre-snap movements, which is something that I went over in a previous video about defense cheats. If you guys want to see more about this topic, I'll once again have a link in the description as well as on screen at the end of the video. As quarterbacks only really have a few programmed animations, for most audibles like hot routes and play changes, the quarterback will usually turn their head to the side and yell to the entire team or yell and point in the direction of a specific receiver that they are putting on a hot route. So there's no real tell there unless you see your opponent doing a lot of them, which usually means a pass play, since there's more setup involved and you can do things like pass protection calls and stuff like that. The only other animation a quarterback does has to do with the running back specifically, as a quarterback will tap his shoulders when under center or tap his hip when not under center, meaning that he is flipping a run play or putting a running back on a pass block, which means this adjustment can give away a lot, especially in a shotgun since you can't flip a run play in this formation. So with all this information, available, it's really best to try to hide this as much as possible. So did you know that you can hide at least one adjustment of your choosing while coming out of the huddle and walking to the line of scrimmage? This is because your quarterback is already in a forced animation of getting set that happens on every play, and you can't do multiple animations at once. So when you are walking to the line of scrimmage, you can either change the direction of the running back with the right stick, change one receiver to a hot route, or you can change the play entirely and your opponent won't have a clue because it's covered up by the preset animation. Next up, if you find yourself taking a lot of sacks, it might be because you're not using pass protection audibles enough. If your opponent is blitzing more defenders than you have blockers, this is an obvious recipe for taking sacks unless you get the ball out quickly. But even having the same amount of blockers as rushers is no guarantee the blitz will get picked up either if you're not using the right adjustments. For example, you might think if your opponent is sending six blitzers that all you have to do to pick up the blitz is put your running back on a pass block. But this is not always the case, as the running back's awareness is especially bad at times in pass blocking to the point where he often lets blitzers run right past them. But what a lot of people don't know is that you 
you can get a much better and more effective consistent blocking setup from the running back by instead putting him in a check and release for multiple reasons. Number one, whenever facing a man coverage, someone is usually assigned to the running back. So if you put him on a pass block with no route assignment, the defender assigned to him will recognize that and change his focus to a deep zone instead, making this defense more like a cover one now. But the simple act of putting a running back on a check and release completely flips that upside down as the running back will stay home to block if any rushers get in immediately while also still technically being on a route, which means the safety or whoever is covering him will have to stay engaged and wait for him to go out on a route, which usually means that they'll just stand around in the middle of the field waiting for something to happen that never does. Putting the running back on a check and release is also more consistent at picking up blitzers as well. I did an experiment in a previous video where I ran the same man zero blitz defense, the Overstorm Brave, against the same offense 20 times. The first 10 times I put the running back on a straight pass block and the second 10 times I put him on a check and release to see which one gave up more sacks. And the results are very surprising as the blitzing linebacker ran right past the pass blocking running back 4 times out of 10 while the check and release picked him up every single time allowing 0 sacks. Just remember before you do this that this is a check and release and it will eventually release into the flats so don't expect him to hold that block for long. And if this still doesn't work, your last option is to just throw the ball away, as throwing the ball under pressure can cause a lot of errant underthrown or overthrown balls that can land anywhere, including the defender's hands. So if the play breaks down, just push in the right stick and your quarterback will safely throw it out of bounds in the direction of the nearest receiver, as throwing it there is better than throwing an interception. Just try to get outside of the pocket before you do to avoid any intentional grounding penalties that you might get. Next up, if your running back or any player is getting tired and you want to keep them in the game, you have several options to try to get them back their stamina. The first option is situational, as going into a two minute warning or the end of a quarter will give all of your players rest time before the next play starts. You can also sacrifice a timeout, but this isn't always the best move, and since you might not even have a timeout, none of these are always available to you or entirely under control like the next one. As you can also regain stamina for tired players by simply cycling through the formation from left to right or right to left as fast as possible. And you will see that after doing this for about 10 to 15 seconds that the stamina color of the running back changed multiple shades lighter. Next up, I'll go over some things you can do during the play that will vastly improve your chances of success and help you get much better results. Starting with a function that most players don't know how to do even though it's been in the game for a very long time, and that is playmaking. To playmaker the nearest receiver to the quarterback, all you have to do is move the right stick in any direction that you want the receiver to go. This can help you out in the jam if no one is open, but it's also useful when you have receivers open underneath zone coverages, as pass leading them up the field before throwing can set them up for a much bigger run after the catch. When it comes to catching the ball, if you find that your receivers are dropping a lot of wide open balls, it might not be the game's fault, as this year's Madden is a lot touchier than in years past when it comes to input in the passing game. Whether it's throwing the ball accurately or making the catch, timing and precision are everything, so if you're not timing these things perfectly, it may feel like something just isn't working right. But luckily, timing the catch is optional if you use my next tip, and that is to always tap the catch button repeatedly, whether on offense or defense, and you will catch the ball at a much higher rate. When rack catching, pressing the X or square button will also help your receiver run faster to run under the ball better, even faster faster than sprinting with the right trigger. It'll also help you out with my last tip about catching, and that is safe catching, as this might be the most important catch function in the game. Safe catching is the catch function you perform when you press the A button on Xbox or the X button on PlayStation. Doing this over the middle of the field will make your receiver drop to the ground while shielding the ball in his best attempt to secure the reception. It will also make him avoid contact from any nearby defender looking to hit him to force a knockout. But that's not all, as doing this catch function near the sideline or near the back of the end zone will result in him performing a toe drag animation to try to keep his feet in bounds significantly improving his chances of making the catch. So that's it, that's the video. If you guys enjoyed this content and want to see more, please make sure to be a subscriber, hit the like button, let me know in the comment section as it really helps out the channel and I appreciate the support. Other than that, I just made a video just like this about defense. So if you're struggling on defense as well, just click the links as I'm sure it'll help with your game. Other than that, I'll see you next time and thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my bids and more. Link in the description below.